In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we bless your name for our leaders. Thank you for all the leaders who are here. Thank you for the commitment of your people. I pray, Lord, that as we are committed to the service of the Lord, all the needs of our lives, you will meet without exception in Jesus' name. Amen. We're asking, Lord, that as we're caring for the people, in your faithfulness, in your love, mercy, and grace, your care for every one of us. Amen. We pray, Lord, as we look at your word again tonight, lift up your people. Amen. Raise up your people. Amen. Transform our lives. Amen. Move us forward so that, Lord, we'll make progress in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who are discouraged, encourage them. Those who are downtrodden or poor, jobless, I pray, Lord, provide for them miraculously in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, Lord, that you meet all the needs of your people. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Wonderful to be together once again with you. I pray that tonight the Lord will answer the questions of your heart in Jesus' name. Amen. And bring solution to every problem you may be bothered about your personal life and in the family and in the ministry as well in jesus name we recognize everyone here we appreciate that you are here and we appreciate that these hard times yet we can have a full house even in the leaders meeting today you don't know how much i appreciate your commitment and god appreciates you more we're looking at uh, 1 Samuel chapter 22. Actually, if we had uh, time, uh, I would have, you know, even uh, allowed you to ask questions because a lot of uh, things in um, chapter 22 of 4 Samuel, but we don't have the time. So I'm going to look at verses 1 through to 5. Look at this. In 1 Samuel chapter 22 verse 1, And David therefore departed this, and escaped to the cave of Adulam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that, is, that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about how many? Four hundred men. And David went thence to Mispe of Moab. And he said to the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab. And they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hole. And the prophet God said unto David, Abide not in the hold, depart and get thee into the land of judah then david departed and came into the forest of harris as we look at uh, those uh, simple verses uh, there are a lot of things uh, in those verses and uh, to start with you will see here that 400 men of the people that were discontented and the people that were in debt and the people were in general distress. They came to David. And David had his own problems. So he was running about and running away from Saul. And he had enough on his hands already. And these 400 people came. And they gathered unto him. He received them. He accepted them. And when you see what became of them later, you'll know that David had the wisdom of God. And tonight I'm talking to you on transforming common men to unconquerable ministers. Those 400 people, they became very significant in the warfare and in the ministry and in the calling of david he didn't have any better person he would use so he had all these 400 people 
and he accepted them and something happened to them you see as pastors and ministers sometimes you look at the members you have sometimes look you look at the common people the common women the common youths and the common children and the common uh, leaders so around you and you think can we do anything with this lord can we do anything with this bunch David is telling us, and David is teaching us, and David is training us that if he could do something with those 400, you can do something with the local church you belong to. And that's why we're looking at this transforming common men to unconquerable ministers before that. This chapter contains many lessons which most believers fail to understand. You see, there are things over here that as a reader, casually you are wondering, how could that happen? And where, why did that happen? <clears throat> number one, we see the people. Here we see, number one, the king, verse one, verse six. David, a king, coming to a throne. And Saul, a king that had been rejected by the Lord. We see kings. Number two, we see priests. As you look at verse 11, and you look at verse 20, we see the priests over there, and you see what happened unto them. Number three, we see the prophet. That's it, verse 5, prophet Gash. I put that this way. Number one, the prince, that's the king. Number two, the priest. Number three, the prophet. We we'll see them there. And I say, Lord, to learn. And you know, as you look at... Um, Ahimelech, that is the priest. You see, he was ignorant of what was really happening. Here David came, and David asked him uh, that, uh, you know, he wanted bread and all that. He couldn't discern. And even when David told him that the king had sent him on an errand, and that the king's business requires his, that's why I'm coming right now, and Ahimelech knew nothing about that. You couldn't tell Elisha that. You couldn't tell Elijah that because, you know, Elijah, Elisha are the gifts of the spirit, the word of knowledge. And they will tell you immediately, you, know, you think, I don't know what you are saying, that's a lie. Gehazi, where have you been? Your servant went no whither. Didn't I see you? Did not my spirit follow you? When that man turned and gave you this, the priest was ignorant spiritually. He was ignorant of current affairs. Ignorant of current affairs. As Saul said, uh -uh. you gave bread to my enemy and you gave him the sword. He said, your enemy? That's the most faithful man in the land. All he knew was the song they sang. All he knew was that David killed Goliath. And the very fact that everybody knew that Saul was chasing David, he was totally ignorant. He didn't know current affairs. He didn't know the affairs of the kingdom. And he didn't know the current affairs. When we're ignorant spiritually, and we're ignorant naturally, we're ignorant of what is going on around us, it gets us into danger. Another thing. You see, this was the family of Eli. All these priests were looking at, they came from Eli. And as you look at this, we're looking at the first Kings chapter 2. First Kings chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 27. In first Kings chapter 2, verse 27, the only one that escaped among them will see the comment about him. Do you remember the name of the one that escaped and went to David? Do you remember the name? Yes. That's okay. We're looking at First Kings chapter 2 verse 27. So Solomon thrust out, tell me the name, Abertha, from, the, from being a priest unto the Lord, that he might fulfill the word of the Lord, which is spake concerning, tell me, the house of Eli in Shiloh. You see, Ahimelech and all those priests, they should have known that they belong to the family of Eli. And there's been a pronouncement on Eli and the whole of the family of Eli that God will wipe them out. That was a curse. That was on the whole family of the priests. And they didn't care. The man did not have the knowledge of the spirit. 
the man did not have the knowledge of the scriptures the man did not have the knowledge of the current affairs what was going on around him and that ignorance made him pay dearly he paid dearly what should he have done he should have recognized that's a curse on the house of eli and god is saying he's going to wipe them out until there will be no person in the priest's office in the family of eli and he should have taken that to prayer he should have said oh lord i know this causes that just like ruth ruth knew that the moabites were under a curse and she singled herself out do not tell me to leave you now me i am going to follow you until the time of death and god singled out rules so that the curse will not be upon her the curse upon moab and so this is what they should have done and many people don't understand as we read all this but another side of the story is this that there was a curse on the house of eli on Ahimelech and all those places did not mean that Saul was not guilty. Saul was still guilty. And God will still judge the bloodthirsty. He will still judge, do it, and judge all those people. Well, we've learned that. Now, there were, I've told you, there are people here, the priest, and then the priest, and then the prophet. There were places as well. As we look at uh, this, uh, first uh, Samuel, let's come back to this. For Samuel, chapter 22 and you look at this chapter what places do you see you see adulam what's adulam the meaning of adulam is a refuge you see a uh, days uh, david he ran there and he was uh, seeking refuge from uh, the uh, enemy that was chasing him look at psalm uh, 57 in psalm 57 uh, sometimes when you read uh, your bible you only read uh, from verse one but this time now i'm going to make you look at the title on top of psalm 57 are you there psalm 57 you see the title there what's the title you find there I'm asking what title do you find in Psalm 57? He says to the chief musician, and then mentions uh, something you cannot pronounce there. And then he talks of David when he fled from Saul in the cave. In the cave. And so you find, he said, Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed and so he was seeking refuge in the lord and the refuge he got he got that refuge in the lord we're coming back to first samuel chapter 22 in first samuel chapter 22 i'm reading here from verses 3 and 4 in first samuel chapter 2 verse 3 it says and david went thence to mispe of tell me of moab of moab you should wonder about that of moab you see moab was not in israel moab was in another place entirely but although it's sharing border with israel all the same is outside the land of israel and you're asking yourself how could david do that was that not a foreign land yes was that not a defiled land yes somehow but you need to remember now where did ruth come from from moab what's the relationship of ruth to obed to jesse to david now you get the point you see boaz in israel married ruth and ruth came from moab and so you see obed the son of uh, Boaz and Ruth had connection with Moab. And then Jesse. So Jesse, the father, is the grandson, was the grandson of Ruth. Ruth was the grandmother. And because of that connection, that's why David said, it will be all right since there's danger over here that my father and my mother having connection with moab because of the connection with ruth will go there to seek refuge not only that isaiah chapter 16 in isaiah chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 4 very important verse of scripture isaiah 
chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 4 have you opened your bible very important it says let my outcasts dwell with thee tell me the next word there moab that's the prophet and it's the god himself god is saying moab because of ruth because of that connection i have a special place of refuge in moab for my outcast and he's saying let my outcast dwell with thee moab be thou a covert to them from the face of the spoiler and from the extortioner is at a, and for the extortioner is at an end the spoiler ceases and the oppressors are consumed out of the land and so god himself saw moab as a place of refuge for the outcast and because david did not know what was going to happen to him and he knew that saul would chase him to the remotest corner and if he couldn't get him he could uh, hold to his father and his mother and says when i hold his father when i hold his mother and when i deal with them whichever place david is because of the passion for his father and mother he will come out and so david thought ahead and said i'm going to put my father in a safe place and the outcast now can find refuge in moab at a time of the great tribulation when the church is gone and when the church is no more here and the antichrist will be on this earth and there will be how many years of trouble how many years of trial how many years of tribulation tell me out loud seven years uh, there'll be a place that will be secured that the antichrist will not touch i'm showing you this in daniel chapter 11 daniel chapter 11 and i'm reading here from verse 36 so that you will know that this is the time of the antichrist it says uh, daniel 11 verse 36 and the king shall you according to his will that's the antichrist and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god that's the antichrist and shall speak marvelous terrible things against the god of gods you know that's the antichrist and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished for that that is determined shall be done neither shall he regard the god of his fathers this is the antichrist nor the desire of a woman nor regard any soul any god for he shall magnify himself above all but in his stage shall he honor the god of forces a god whom his fathers knew not shall be shall he honor with gold and silver and with uh, precious stones and uh, pleasant things thus shall he do in the most uh, strong holes and uh, with a strange god whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory and he shall cause them to rule over many and then it says and shall divide the land uh, for game and at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him and the king of the north shall come against him like a wild wind with chariots and with a horseman and with many ships and he shall enter into the countries this antichrist now and shall overthrow and pass over the antichrist is talking about and it says and he shall enter into the glorious land which is the glorious land israel he'll enter into israel and many countries shall be overthrown but these shall escape out of his hand even tell me and tell me and the chief of the children of Ammon. At the time of uh, the great tribulation, when the Antichrist sweeps everywhere, goes everywhere, there'll be a place, so there'll be places that will be free, that the Antichrist will not be able to enter. And those people that seek refuge in that place, they'll be secured, they'll be protected. And one of those places is Moab. 
and so you understand as you as you read all these things in the bible you know in the old testament you you're reading uh, for samuel chapter 22 and then uh, david went to the king of moab and he said let my father my mother stay with you here until i know what god will do with me everything has a meaning and i pray that god will open our spiritual eyes in jesus name as i said tonight we're looking at transforming common men to unconquerable ministers there's hope for you no matter how weak you are you are going to become strong and no matter how confused you may be now i see conquerors here tonight and conquerors will be in jesus name we're looking at three points number one the messengers of the prince the messengers of the prince number two the maintenance of our parents the maintenance of our parents number three the ministry of his prophets the ministry of his prophets we're coming back to for samuel chapter 22 for samuel chapter 22 and i'm reading from verse 1 for samuel chapter 22 and we're reading from verse 1 verses 1 and 2 the messengers of the prince it tells us in verse 1 it says david therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave adulam and when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And every one that was in distress, and every one that was in debt, and every one that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him. Unto him who? Unto David. And he became a captain over them. There were with him about, tell me, 400 men. About 400 men. Now, you see, as we think about all these people that came to David, David could have said, you'll be a burden on me. You are a debtor. You are in distress. And you are in discontentment. And, and I'm running about. I don't know what's going to happen to me. They were like ordinary people common people recruits I come to chapter 23 in chapter 23 i'm reading from verse 13 in verse 13 then david and his men they're not referred to as his men now david and his men which were about tell me 600 arose and departed out of Kela. That he said they were now increasing and they'll become 600. And this was still ruffians. This was still recruits. This was still common people. These were still ordinary people. Don't minimize the strength of anyone. Don't minimize the possibilities of anyone. If you take all these 400, all these 600 that were like common people, like, were like they didn't know anything or could do anything, they were debtors and they were discouraged people, confused people. If you will take them on board and then see what the grace of God can do in them, you'll be surprised by the time you come to the next level. Because you yourself, you are coming to the next level and those people that god is helping you to train and to bring up they're coming to the next level in jesus name it's so interesting we read chapter 22 and then chapter 23 of a fall somewhere and then we go to the next level now i'm taking you to the next level and it's in chapter 23 of second samuel next level now we're looking at second samuel and we're looking at uh, chapter 23, 22 and 23, the other place, 23 in this place now, in um, 2 Samuel chapter 23. And it says in verse 8, these be the names of the mighty men whom David had. Look at that, look at that. Uh, as they move from 1 Samuel to 2 Samuel, they were no more miserable men anymore. They were no more uh, meek men anymore. They were not downtrodden people anymore. The mighty men that David had. If God could give grace to David in the Old Testament, that he could take all these 400 people that were non-entities and didn't have anything, and he turned them to become great men, mighty men, 
we can do the same today all those workers under us all those members in our local churches the ones that will say that was an illiterate this one is always crying this one is always complaining this one is always having problem this one is in debt and this one is discontented this one nothing ever nothing good ever happens to this one don't drive anybody away get them near something great will happen to them and you yourself anytime you're discouraged anytime you're done trodden anytime you see come in dead how can i still keep on working for god god needs you god will pay that debt for you and then your life will turn around in jesus name it says in that verse eight, this be the mighty man whom david had and then he goes on mentioning their names and then he goes on in verse eight sorry in verse nine after he was Eliezer, the son of dodo and uh, a whole a whole height one of the three mighty men was david when they defied the philistines they that were gathered that were gathered there together unto battle and the men of israel were gone away look at verse 10 he arose one of these men one of those people when they came they didn't know their left from their right. They were confused people. They were people in debt. They were people that were disturbed. But now look at them and they say, He arose, you will arise. And smote the Philistines until his sand was weary and his sand clave unto the sword. And the, and the Lord wrought a great victory that day. And the people returned after him only to spoil. You see, these were the people that gathered around him. These were the people that, by the grace of God, power came into them. And I'm, I'm sure that from this very day, your life will never be the same again forget the past forget what you were in the past because we have come now to christ jesus the son of david jesus son of david have mercy on me mercy is coming upon your life and what david did to those 400 men the son of david jesus christ is mightier he is greater and is higher that son of david jesus christ he will do something in your life in jesus name Look at verse 15 here. Verse 15. It says, And, uh, and David launched and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem. And then he goes on to say, We chased by the gate, and the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was in by the gate, and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but he poured it out unto the Lord and said, Be it far from me, O Lord that i should do this is this not the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives therefore he would not drink it these things did these three mighty men look at this david did not even say come here i need to drink water and the only kind of water i want to drink is in bethlehem of judah therefore whatever you will do go there i know the philistines are there i know the philistines will if they saw any of you and they recognize you to be one of my servants i know they will finish you and kill you but all the same i need water he didn't say that he only you know he was talking he was thinking aloud we we'll say he was soliloquizing he was saying oh that somebody will give me water from Bethel and then from Bethlehem and then I will drink and those people overheard he didn't say go the three of them they said we are so loyal to this man we'll be so faithful to this man we'll be so committed to this man we will go there look at the Philistines in their garrisons look at the truth and look at the danger in front but they didn't mind the danger they went through the truth and they knew that he could do it you can do all things i can do all things through christ that strengthens me these were the people that were in debt these were the people that were discontented these were the people that were discouraged and now they have been developed and trained and they went on they got the water and they came back 
when david saw them he said this is much more than i can understand because it was their blood because he could have died and so he said although i am thirsty although i want this they have made consecration a kind of consecration that i never thought anybody could make on my behalf i'm going to top up that consecration i put this as a drink offering unto the lord what i'm saying is this these people that were nobody these people that were non-entities these people that were discouraged and discontented that this man david took them and brought them to this level of loyalty there is hope for our church there's hope for your family don't cast that daughter away that daughter that appears she doesn't hear anything she doesn't know anything she is uh, not uh, listening to us something great will happen to that daughter don't cast that son away that son that you see uh, how, wait, how could you get you to death like this young man where have you been? What are you doing? That you are so and, you, and you're so disgruntled in life. You, nothing ever makes you happy. Be careful, be careful. Don't drive that boy away because that boy will become somebody. Yeah. And then all our workers and all our people that will see us, see if you know they are down there, they're coming up. And then as I see you here today, now we have not removed your name. Don't remove your own name. Yeah. Don't say, I will not go anymore. We're expecting you. You are coming. Because what you saw yesterday, today, everything will turn around. The darkness of yesterday will not continue. The discouragement of yesterday will not continue. And the debt that may be hanging on your head now, and you say, I'm even afraid to go out because I'm a debtor. Look at this and look at this. God is going to clear everything away from you. What did David do? And what did these people do? How did this change come upon them? Number one, they turned unto him. They turned unto him. How is Jesus Christ going to make the change in my life? Because if Jesus is going to touch me and transform my life, I must do something. What did they do? Number one, they turned unto him. I turned to the Lord. With all my guilt, I turned to the Lord. With all my weakness, I turned to the Lord. With all the fears and all the burning upon my head, I turned to the Lord. Number one, they turned unto the Lord. Number two, they trusted in him. Trusted in him. He said, the anointing of God is upon David. Although he is running about now, although Saul is chasing him, but we know that this is the king because he's the anointed one. They turned to him, they trusted in him, and then they were taught by him. They were taught by him. He taught them. He knew something. They knew he knew something. Somebody who could kill Goliath, that man knows something. Somebody who could play the harp, and the evil spirit will get away from Saul. This man knew something. They came to him so that everything that he had, he'll pour upon them. And he did that. He taught them. They were taught by him. Number four, they were transformed by him. Transformed by him. You can see, as you come to this next level, as you come to Second Samuel chapter 20, three you see that they were not the same anymore and by the time i see you tomorrow i'll see i see it on your face the courage and the strength that you will say i am not like i was yesterday something has happened to me and i'm transformed you'll be transformed in jesus name number one tell me they turned to him number two tell me distrusted in him number three tell me they were taught by him number four tell me they were transformed by him number five he trained them he trained them now it, we don't have the time to read all the references if you look at chapter 25 he told every one of them god up god around you your souls he provided sword for every one of those people every one of them 400 of them at that time he provided sword for them and then he said guard up your swords and, and then come after me and we're going to get this done until abigail came to him so that he will not destroy the house of a neighbor and so he trained they were trained by him number six they were tenacious with him tenacious with him he went here 
they went there. He went there. They went there. He benched out. They bent down. He stood up. They stood up. And he focused on something. They focused on that thing. They were tenacious with him. They will not give up. You know, if you follow Jesus Christ like that, and he's saying he's taking you somewhere, and you are tenacious, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. The battle you fight, I will fight. I'm telling you, you're not going to be the same anymore. And eventually, they triumphed. They were triumphant for him. They were triumphant for him. They turned unto him. They trusted in him. They were taught by him. They were transformed by him. They were trained by him. They were tenacious with him. And they triumphed for him you will triumph i come to point number two and we're looking at first samuel chapter 22 first samuel chapter 22 and i'm reading from verses three and four first samuel chapter two chapter 22 verses uh, three and four it tells us in uh, verse three it says and david went this to miss be of moab and he said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hold. The maintenance of our parents. Uh, can you see uh, David here? David was uh, concerned for the welfare of his parents. And said uh, Saul was uh, unpredictable. You couldn't predict Saul. If he didn't get David, he could go after his father. He could go after his mother. And then just to cause pain in the heart of David. You remember when they were on the table. And Jonathan was his own son. He was the son that uh, Saul was thinking, this will take my place. This will reign after I'm gone. And then the first day they had a feast in the palace. And David was not there. He was watching. Uh, and then he kept quiet. Second day there was a feast. And David still was not there. And so he said, Jonathan, tell me. Where's David? Oh, David asked permission from me that there is a feast in the family. And he went there and I excused him that he could go. Don't I know? Perverse son. Of a terrible mother. I knew you would do that. If that David is still alive, you will not train. And Jonathan said, But my father, what has he done? What has he done? He took the javelin and wanted to strike Jonathan. A man that could want to kill his own son because his son knew the whereabouts of a David and did not reveal it. That's why David felt that this man, you can't predict him. If nothing comes upon him, he could go after my father. He could go after my mother. And even though David was in danger, he cared for his father. He cared for his uh, mother. And that is uh, telling us something. It's teaching us a particular lesson. Whatever our condition may be, and whatever it is, we must, like he settled his parents. And it we settled them. I told you the reason why he settled them in Moab. Do you do that? Our parents, we ourselves now are getting a little bit old. Our parents are elderly. Our parents are becoming aged. What are we doing? I want to tell you something. It is worldly and it is wicked for you not to take care of your parents. And then after they are dead, you are spending millions of naira. And you are spending thousands of dollars for funeral for burial and for reception the father is gone the mother is gone when the mother was here when the father was here you didn't have the time to visit your father or to visit your mother you didn't have the time to provide shelter no time to provide anything you were so busy and now he is gone now she is gone you are spending money you're not doing it for her you're not doing it for him for your father you're doing it for yourself 
you are doing it for the people that are coming to it and they will say oh, that man they're not praising your father they're not praising your mother they're praising you he spent he lavish money and then you give all your savings and everything you've got that's what they do in the world that's what they do in the world and if our fathers and mothers over there in the great beyond could talk back to us or say ah, so you had this money you didn't give me rich uh, provide house for me so you have all this money i didn't eat uh, you know good food as i was you know getting near the grave so you have this time now you took time off and you're spending days now we are celebrating we're burying daddy and we're burying mommy so you have this time you never visited me you told me church 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 you told me we're very busy you told me that you know i'll be sending something to you it's like you are throwing currency at me and i didn't spend your money go and look under that place you'll find all your money there because i didn't have the appetite to even eat your food you just threw it at me you didn't stay by my side you didn't take care of me but look at david and look at the condition of david he said i must care for my father i must care for my mother and that's what the lord is telling us today is says number one provide shelter provide shelter where does your father live your aged father where does your mother live your aged mother in this cold in this condition and the flood is the rain and the flood coming into the house of daddy and mommy and then nobody is caring provide a good shelter number two provide sustenance sustenance while our fathers are aged while our fathers are also that we will not send them to an untimely grave we care for them you know sometimes sorrow can kill somebody sometimes every heart can kill somebody where is my daughter where is my son who oh, they say that he's gone his church is a special church they call his church deeper life and those people once they enter there they don't remember father they don't remember mother it's only church church and ministry eh? my father my my son my daughter i labored on her i labored on him and you have forgotten me let there be sustenance let there be shelter and then let there be security look at the condition of our land and look at what david was trying to do david said i'll provide security for my father i'll provide security for my mother let's provide security how about salvation how about salvation you check up daddy is aged and mommy is elderly and if they die at this time where will they spend eternity when they can still recollect when they can still understand when they will still recognize you that's the time to go there and say daddy i want to talk about something important of course by that time you are the only son you are the only daughter that has provided good shelter you are the only one that has provided sustainers you are the only one you have employed somebody full time to be taking care of daddy and taking care of mommy and they know that you are very much concerned of course of course you are special to them now she's giving me shelter she's giving me sustenance she's giving me security my daughter talked to me what are you talking about mommy i'm talking about heaven i'm talking about salvation because i love you i know mommy you're a good person i know you took care of me I, I know what you suffered i know what you endured but mommy there is something you must have before you close your eyes in death and before you go to the great beyond what's that my daughter what's that my son is called salvation ah salvation i'm saved don't you see me i've been going before you were born i was going to church and did, did it, have you ever seen a medicine in my hand this how my heart is saying mommy it's not like that and then you are patient with her you are patient with him and you talk about salvation until your mother will understand your father will understand and your daddy will say now how can i get it that's salvation what daddy all you need to do you confess your sin you believe on the lord jesus christ and you'll be saved as simple as that yes we can do it now and then you pray with him and he says my son i feel happy that's salvation i feel the peace of god it's like something heavy had been on my mind had been on my head everything has been taken away salvation salvation your father and your mother look at what david did number one is shelter number two is sustenance number three is security number four is tell me salvation 
number five number five spirituality spirituality you, you are following up you are not saying just like you follow up other converts you follow up other people here is your daddy here is your mommy you can speak in his language you can speak in her language and she understands you and you understand her even when she just so show you sign you understand the sign because are you not the daughter are you not the son you will be maintaining the spirituality so that the assurance of getting to heaven every time you get there because now you have to visit him more regularly you have to visit her more regularly because you see you don't want to have to close her eyes and then you are not there you don't want him to close his eyes and then you are not there you want to stay by his side you want to stay by her side and then and when the you know messenger from on high is coming and she he's about to go is although he may he has that son that son that other daughter is asking of you because you are the closest person and then they say yes he say, let him come let him come and then you come in there and then he looks at you he can't talk too much now he just looks at you and he smiles and then he points that place he says meet me there because i'm going there now he says bye bye are you seeing angels they have come for me and then he passes on to glory how happy you will be how satisfied you will be that you led your father you led your mother you helped or shelter your health was sustainers your health was security and your health was salvation and your help was spirituality and your help was the assurance of getting to heaven you say praise the lord my daddy went home praise the lord my mommy went home some of us have lost that privilege but those of us whose fathers and mothers are still alive here is david now and david is telling us see how i did it and see what i did and we will do the same thing in jesus name give the care that's what you need at this time give the comfort that's what you need at this time give the companionship that's what they need at this time so that by the grace of god like david catered for father and mother you also will cater for them in jesus name let me show you something we're looking at john chapter 19 john chapter 19 and i'm reading here from verse 25 john chapter 19 and we're reading from verse 25 now they stood by the cross of jesus his mother and his mother's sister mary the wife of cleopas uh, cleopas and uh, mary magdalene and jesus therefore saw when jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved he says unto his mother woman behold thy son he was pointing to john john the beloved he said i'm going he was dying for the salvation of the whole world he was me he was already crucified for the salvation of the whole world and yet he remembered his mother he saw the mother there and he saw john there he said john behold that's your mother take care of her like i would take care of her if i were here maybe you are not around maybe your mother is not over here in the city in which you are living your mother is somewhere do you commit your mother to somebody like a son a real son like a real daughter that will take care of that mother that's what we need to do we will do it in jesus name if you are going to do it let me hear you it will be done i said it will be done the joy in your heart the joy in your heart that as my mother was getting old i remember i remember that i was near her i took care of her now she's gone to glory the joy you will have and you know what you sow tell me now you will read take care of daddy now take care of mommy now when it comes to your time you're not as agile as active as this and now the body is weak and all the organs of the body is like they're packing up children not just believers your own children then they'll stand by your side you turn this side that's that boy there 
I call him boy, but you know he's a great man now. That's that girl there. I call him her girl. That's that woman there. They will stay by your side. Do it for your parents and your children will do it for you. Care for your parents and your children will care for you. Be companions of your parents and then your own children will be companions to you as well in Jesus' name. Prepare them for heaven. So look at this. Uh, I was still reading from this, uh, verse 26. It says, A woman, behold thy son, verse 27. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. John, take care of my mother. I'm going to heaven. I'll soon say it is finished. But that woman needs care. That woman needs companionship. Be a son to her and let her be your mother. And the way you will take care of your biological mother, take care of her. Look at this. And from that hour, not from that day, from that hour, not from that week, and from that hour, not from that month. You know, some people, they hear a message like this, and they're still preparing for them is from that year. We're hearing this now. Another three months, they're still planning. Another four months, they're still planning. Another six months, they're still planning. But John, the moment he heard from Jesus Christ, Son, behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. And it says, from that hour, that disciple took her unto, unto his own home. When are we going to obey the word of God? From this hour. I say from this hour. If you have not sent something all this while, why don't you bring something big, something good, something significant. Bring it out and then let it get to daddy, let it get to mommy, so that from this hour, the care will begin. The comfort will begin. And daddy will say, what happened? Did you have a dream? Say, Daddy, I'm sorry. From now on, I'll take care of you. Give me a good amen. amen. Mommy, I'm sorry. From now on, I will take care of you. Amen. I said, Amen. amen. You know that man, the rich man, he got to hell. When he got to hell, he saw, he saw Abraham and he saw Lazarus on the other side. He said, Father Abraham sent Lazarus so that can dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I'm tormented in this flame. Father Abraham said, it's not possible. Nobody can cross from here to there, from there to here. Okay, if that's so, go tell him. Send him to my father's house. Ah, now he remembered my father's house. So that he will go and tell them salvation, salvation, eternal life. So that they will not come to this place. And Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophet. said, no. If somebody will go from the place here and go there, they will listen. He says, no, if they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not listen to anybody. But that man was now showing concern to late. Do you remember Rahab? Rahab had these two spies that came to Jericho. And uh, so before they left, he said, I know the Lord has given you this place. And I know that this place is going to be destroyed. But do me a favor. When you come back and this place is to be destroyed, he didn't just say, remember me. He said, remember my father and my mother and my brethren, my father's household. And so when they came in chapter 6 of Joshua, they told Joshua, and when Jericho was dest destroyed, they said, go for that Rehab and her father and her mother and her brethren she provided shelter spiritual and physical and psychological for father and mother do something you will do something i said you will do something point number three now the ministry of his prophets we're coming to for samuel 
In 1 Samuel, I'm looking at uh, chapter 22. 1 Samuel, chapter 22. And I'm reading here from verse 5. It says, And the prophet God said unto David, Abide not in the hold, depart, and get thee into the land of Judah. And then it says, And David departed and came into the forest of Harris. As you look at the um, look at the Old Testament, you'll find the ministry of the prophet. But many people don't understand. When we say prophet, 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 the prophets were the pastors of the Old Testament. They were the preachers of the Old Testament. Uh, let me clear that for you first before I come back to that. Uh, uh, for Samuel, we're looking at Jeremiah chapter one. Jeremiah chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 4 and verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 1, and we're looking at verses 4 and 5. Are you there? Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. If you are there, read verse 4. Okay, I know you are there now. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb i sanctified thee and i ordained thee what a prophet unto the nations a prophet unto the nations hold on to that hold on to that i ordained thee a prophet unto the nations jeremiah chapter 17 in jeremiah chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 15 and verse 16 behold they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. As for me, who was talking? I said, Who was talking? Jeremiah, as for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee. That is, I didn't uh, hold on to this by myself. I didn't rush at this by myself. I didn't seek for this by myself. He said, the Lord made me a pastor. And when you read in chapter 1, I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And when you come to chapter 17, it says, I have not hastened to be a pastor to follow thee. Neither have I desired a woeful day. Thou knowest that which came out of my leaves was right before thee and so the prophets of the old testament they acted like seers they acted like uh, prophets they acted like um, preachers they acted like pastors they acted like counselors they acted like the people that will give warning to the people like evangelists that have given and made a watchman over the house of israel hear the word at my mouth and give them warning for me when i say to a wicked man thou shalt surely die if thou givest him not warning he will die in his iniquity but his blood will i require at your hand but if you give him warning and he departs from iniquity he has saved the soul and then you're free from his blood that tells us then those prophets were like evangelists they were like pastors they were like teachers of the word they were like counselors they were everything we're coming back now to first samuel and i'm looking at uh, chapter 22 first samuel chapter 22 and i'm reading from verse 5 and the prophet uh, god said unto david abide not in the hold depart and get thee into the land of judah then david departed and came came into the forest of Harith. You see this uh, prophet, that's what he told him there for his protection. That's what he told David there so that he will not be uh, destroyed by Saul. But let's come to 2 Samuel chapter 24. 2 Samuel chapter 24. I'm reading here now from verse 11. What's the name of that prophet we're read about now? Tell me out loud. Okay, Second Samuel chapter 24 verse 11. For when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet God. David says here, saying, go, 
and say unto David, Thus says the Lord, I offer thee three things, I choose thee one of them, that I may do each unto thee. So God came to David and told him and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy land? Or wilt thou flee three months before thine enemies while they pursue thee? Or that there be three days a pestilence in thy land? Now advise and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. Because David that's not something wrong. And God was going to send judgment and God said, Go, go and tell David, he must make a choice, either pestilence or famine, or I'm going to judge him directly. And God came to David faithfully. When it was to escape danger, God was faithful in counseling. And he saying, depart, and he departed. And when judgment was coming, and now he was to announce that judgment, he came faithfully. That's how the prophets served in the Old Testament. Look at verse 14. And David said unto God, I am in a great strait. Let us fall now into the hands of the Lord, for his mercies are great. Let me not fall into the hands of men. And so the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even unto the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan unto Beersheba, 70,000 men. And then the angel appeared and eventually, look at verse 18. And God came that day to David and said unto him, Go up. And re an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Arauna, the Jebusite. And David did, David, according to the saying of God, went up as the Lord commanded. Even to make sacrifice, to make atonement, and to get out of the judgment, God still came back. Uh, we're looking at a second, um, uh, we're looking at Second Samuel chapter 12. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, I'm reading here from verse 1. In verse 1 it says, And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. You know the story. Look at verse 7. And Nathan said unto David, Thou art the man that thus says the Lord God, God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And then he began to tell him the story and the thing that he has done. Look at verse 12. For thou didst see it secretly, but I will do this sin before all Israel and before the son. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord has put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. They led them to repentance like evangelists. They counseled them like pastors. They warned them like their fathers in the Lord. Those were the prophets of the Old Testament. That was their ministry. Actually, as we look at the summary of the ministry of those prophets, we're looking at Hosea chapter 10. Hosea chapter 10. I'm reading here. Hosea. We're looking at uh, chapter 10. Osea, when we get there, I'll tell you the chapter and the verse. Osea, okay, it's chapter 12. Chapter 12, and it's uh, verse 10. It says, I have also spoken by the prophets, and I multiplied visions and used similitudes by, tell me, the ministry of the prophets, the ministry of the prophets, those prophets they had a ministry. Now look at verse 13. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt to bring people out of sin, bring people out of the world, bring people out of darkness, bring people out of the curse, and bring people out of damnation by a prophet. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Look at what follows. And by a prophet was he preserved. 
and by prophet was he preserved that his own people have come out of Egypt and they have come out of sin out of evil and to preserve them in covenant relationship with the Lord it was by the ministry of the prophet that includes the evangelist and the teacher and the preacher and the pastor everything that was the ministry of the prophet in the Old Testament now as we come to a conclusion we've talked we've spoken today about the king was spoken about the priest was spoken about the pastor was spoken about the prophet what kind of men what kind of people what kind of ministers the god wants number one as a king number two as a priest number three as a pastor number four as a prophet number one as a king we're looking at uh, acts of the apostles chapter 13 Acts of the Apostles chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 22. Acts chapter 13 verse 22. And when he had removed him, he removed Saul, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will that's the kind of king god wants that's the kind of leader god wants i found a man a man after my own heart that shall fulfill all my will and as you are preparing to be a, a leader a captain over the people of god this is what he requests of you to be a king and then your word will have power a man after my own heart that shall fulfill all my will not the priest what kind of person we expect as a priest we're looking at first samuel chapter 2 verse 35 first samuel chapter 2 and in verse 35 in verse 35 it says and i will raise me up a faithful priest notice that i will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind and i will build him a sure house and he shall walk before mine anointed forever you see the kind of priest is expecting is expecting a priest that will be faithful expecting a priest that will also uh, walk according to his way according to that which is the heart of the lord and according to his mind a king according to his own heart that will fulfill all my will a priest according to his mind that will fulfill all his will what did he expect of a pastor we're looking at jeremiah chapter 3 jeremiah chapter 3 is expectation for the king we've seen that expectation for the priest we've seen that expectation for the pastor jeremiah chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 15 i will give you pastors according to mine heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding you see when god wants a leader whether a king or a priest or a pastor he wants a somebody that will be according to his mind according to his heart that will fulfill his will and feed the people with knowledge and with the truth i about the prophet we're looking at deuteronomy chapter 18 deuteronomy chapter 18 and i'm reading here from verse 15 deuteronomy chapter 18 and we're reading from verse 15 here it tells us about the kind of prophet he wants that is going to raise up the lord thy god will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren like unto me unto him shalt thou hack it. look at verse 18 i will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and will put my word in his mouth he will not speak his own word. I'll put my word in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. All that I shall command him. All this became fulfilled in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He is the king, the king of kings. He is the priest. He is our high priest. And he is the prophet, the prophet that is to come. And he is the good shepherd, the good shepherd, the pastor that gave his life for the sheep. Everything then became focused on him. And we are now to follow his footsteps. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. 
Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 22. It says, For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that followed after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days, ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the of all of the earth be blessed unto you first god having restored up his son jesus sent him to bless you in turning everyone in turning away every one of you tell me from his iniquities now we've come to christ and you remember no matter where we're coming from and no matter what we have been in the past a new day has come for you a new era has come for you it will do great things in you do great things for you and do great things through you those 400 that came to david distressed in debt and discontented when they got to the next level everything changed i see you are the next level everything will change and all the weakness in your life, everything will vanish away. Look at First Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world. That's you, that's me, that's us, to confound the wise. God has chosen the weak things of that the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised as God chosen. Yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. Have you seen your picture there? Yeah. It'll take you up. It will lift you up. From the low level, it will take you to the highest height. Amen. It will start today. Amen. Courage will come to you. Amen. Power will come to you. Amen. A new anointing that will break every yoke in your life. Amen. Rise up and receive. The Lord did it through David. And the Lord is doing it right now through you. He's doing it through you. He's doing it through you. No matter where you have been and no matter what level you have been, he's bringing you up. And say, praise the Lord, it's a new day. Praise the Lord, it's a new era. Praise the Lord, it's a new dispensation. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Receive it and the Lord will build you up, lift you up and you'll get to that exalted position in Jesus' name. Open your mouth, pray and talk to the Lord.